Welcome back to the Caspa Silver YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how Caspa can operate without having a company behind it. The way we're going to explain this is basically just by explaining how Bitcoin operates and then comparing it to Caspa because they're pretty much the same thing. But at the moment, I would say that Caspa is even a little bit more decentralized than Bitcoin is when it comes to developments for Bitcoin. So it all starts with bitcoin core bitcoin core is like a decentralized group of developers that are making adjustments to the bitcoin network now because bitcoin is open source anyone can view the code anyone can view the adjustments anyone can propose new ideas to the developers who are building on bitcoin core and they can either reject it or actually decide to move on with it. In fact, in the past, Yonatan Samplinitsky, which is the founder of Caspa, was proposing to implement Ghost onto Bitcoin, but the, the, the core developers did not want to do it because of how complex it was and how new it was. So at the end of the day, there's always going to be some type of centralization inside of a open source cryptocurrency because there's always going to be core developers developers who actually know what they're doing and so i think people who complain about the fact that core developers are like centralized and they are controlling it it, it just doesn't make sense because it's like if you don't like what they're doing then just create a hard fork of the coin and do your own thing do whatever you think is better but you can't because you don't know how to develop the coin and the developers are going to know way more than we do and we have to trust their knowledge in the space so when it comes to bitcoin bitcoin core was originally started by satoshi actually and then satoshi uh eventually was giving the keys to different people so you can see who are the core developers for bitcoin core and you see it was satoshi uh, and then in 2011, Satoshi gave the keys away to, to Gavin. And then in 2014, he gave it over to uh, this person right here that I don't want to butcher his name. But presently, he is like the person, the main guy behind Bitcoin Core, which all Bitcoin Core is, is a program that runs the Bitcoin network. You could see that right here. Bitcoin Core is programmed to decide which block contains valid transactions the users of bitcoin core only accept transactions for that blockchain making it the bitcoin blockchain that everyone else wants to use for the latest developments related to bitcoin core just visit their official website so it's decentralized and it, it is these users who keep bitcoin decentralized they individually run their own bitcoin core full nodes and each of those full nodes separately follows the exact same rules to decide which blockchain is valid there's no voting, which there shouldn't ever be any kind of voting based on the individual coin holdings, which is not existent when it comes to like Ethereum, because when you are staking in a cryptocurrency, that means if you hold more coins, that gives you more control over the network. This is not the case on Bitcoin or on Caspa. So there's no voting or other uh, corruptible process involved. There's just individual software following identical rules, math, to evaluate identical blocks and coming to identical conclusions about which blockchain is valid so anyone can run the bitcoin core program all it is is that it's a program that's running the bitcoin network the best way i've seen someone explain this is the same way how the internet just exists you can choose if you want to use google chrome or internet explorer uh, or firefox and you can choose between which browser you want to use but it's all the same internet it's still connecting to the same base level of the internet and this is the case here when you see this pie chart here people will show this chart sometimes and say oh you see bitcoin core is like controlling the whole entire thing no that's not the case bitcoin core has the best representation of bitcoin of the bitcoin network because it was originally started with satoshi nakamoto and it has the most uh, respect but with that respect, they can easily do something that people cannot like. And all they have to do is simply get off of the Bitcoin Core program. And you see all these little Bitcoin Classic, Bitcoin XT, 
all these other programs are programs that are running the Bitcoin network and you can run your nodes with that program instead and it's still running Bitcoin. And so Bitcoin Core just holds everything because it was first and it had Satoshi and it's the most respected program to run Bitcoin. So everyone is running Bitcoin Core when they run their node, but you're not forced to run that node. So if Bitcoin Core was to randomly do something that no one liked, you can just leave that program. Just don't follow them. It's it's that simple. So uh, here it is, uh, one of the discussions, and it says, I'm confused about the difference between a fork and a client. Can someone explain? So uh, this is basically their question. My understanding is that clients are different software environments which run on top of the decentralized computing infrastructure, which is the blockchain architecture, the most popular of which by a large margin is Bitcoin Core. This made sense to me, but I recently read that different clients process different types of transactions. For example, Bitcoin XT would process different transactions than the Bitcoin protocol. Would this not make it a fork or of the original blockchain as opposed to a different type of software? How does Bitcoin Cash come into this also as they process different types of transactions but have their own blockchain? Should they not also be listed as a client? Since everything is open source, Anyone can take something, make some changes, and it'll be different. Some good examples are Dash, Dogecoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Just a few examples of someone taking Bitcoin's core code, tweaking it, and releasing it. Given some of them did, did it different ways. Doge, for example, started over with Block Zero. It's considered a new coin, while Bitcoin Cash used the history of Bitcoin up to a specific block before their changes took effect. This is a hard fork. And that's why with Bitcoin Cash, when a hard fork happens, basically you get airdropped Bitcoin Cash. So if you're holding the original Bitcoin network and someone wants to create a hard fork, what happens is basically they airdrop Bitcoin Cash, which is the new coin on the new uh, hard fork. And basically what happened is everyone just dumped their coins on Bitcoin Cash because why would you go to another network, Bitcoin Cash, where the original developers, which started with Satoshi, are still sticking to Bitcoin, it's just not going to be better. Like everyone was just using Bitcoin Cash to mine it and simply get their coins and just dump it to back to Bitcoin because it's it's number one. It has the most history and the best security. So a node configured to run, or in some cases, simply a flag in a, conf a config file, Dash will not receive process store Litecoin blocks. The same way a Bitcoin node would not receive process store Bitcoin cash blocks. Once the block where the hard fork occurred was hit, I'm aware there are nuances to this, but uh, brevity, brevity is taking priority. Finally, to touch on your first point, there can be many clients for a specific coin. It's open source. There is no official client for Bitcoin as it's decentralized from the ground up. Some chains use a more centralized development process like the Ethereum Foundation. While they provide more input, as well as some communities have more sway over specific chains, it is ultimately up to the individuals running nodes on if they will upgrade and support the changes. This is the best highlighted in the hard fork of for Ethereum 25th October 2016. Those that did not fork were left with the original code and the original coin not offered to as ethereum classic those that did upgrade were then using the current day ethereum and the end no matter what client is used it must follow the same basic protocols as the network it's trying to interact with as long as it does then it can be used so like i was saying you have google chrome you have internet explorer you have firefox it doesn't matter which one you use you're going to access the internet so it's the same thing with bitcoin core and then all these other clients you can use either of them. You're going to still interact with Bitcoin. People just use Bitcoin Core because it's the most trusted and it has the most trusted developers because, again, it started with Satoshi Nakamoto. So how does this work with Caspa? We don't have a company. There's no company behind Bitcoin and there's no company behind Caspa. How does it work with Caspa? So simply put, the way Caspa works is pretty much the same way. Right now, if you wanted to run a node on Caspa, I'm pretty sure you, you just have to download the KDX wallet, load it up on your on your laptop, and boom, you can run the node. If someone wants to hard fork Caspa, there would be a new type of node that you need to run to that new network. You have to change it to the new network to mine 
or to run a node on the new type of hard fork or Caspa, but it's all open source and decentralized. Anyone can make changes to the code. The problem is, are the nodes gonna have consensus to the new code? So people have asked, is Caspa uh, able to be transitioned to proof of stake? Well, the answer to that is no, like final no, because the protocols that are used for Caspa to make it work and to be fast and scalable and all that as a proof of work, it needs to remain proof of work. If you change it to proof of stake, the protocols that Yonatan developed will simply just not work. So it can never change the proof of stake. But can you change the supply, like how much there is in supply? If someone wanted to make, let's say, like a Bitcoin Caspa where there's a 21 million supply, but it uses basically the same protocols, you could do that, but it would be a hard fork. And the problem is, are you going to find developers to help you develop that coin? Are the developers who are, are, are uh, right now working on Caspa as it is going to develop, help you develop that new coin? Probably not. They know much better than we do. And at the end of the day, the nodes are the people who choose who they're going to trust. And right now, currently, the nodes are going to be pointing towards the Caspa network. That is the only one in existence right now. Uh, same with Bitcoin. The nodes obviously want to choose Bitcoin Core. Right now, there's not really, other, I don't think there's any other clients that are running the Caspa network that you can choose like a different type of node or whatever. It's simply right now, it's just KDX. So is that centralized? No, not really, because right now, if the developers were wanting, like wanting to do something pretty drastic, it would require a hard fork. And that hard fork would require everyone who's running a node on KDX to switch to that new network. And so you need to have consensus if you want to have hard forks. Ethereum did not successfully have consensus on its hard forks. That's why Ethereum Classic exists. And that remains to be seen what's going to happen with that. And so also with Bitcoin, people, some people didn't have consensus when uh, there was different decisions being made. So Bitcoin Cash exists, Bitcoin SV exists. People just kept hard forking Bitcoin because they're trying to make it better. Uh, but they failed at doing that. People are always going to just remain to the original thing. So there's no company needed to run Caspa. We simply now and on this on the discord is how we vote for funding and how we fund developers to work on Caspa. You can actually see the addresses on Caspa right down here. You could see that there's something called a rust fund, which is basically all the money that was funded for the people who are going to be developing rust, which are basically like the core devs of uh, Michael and a few other people who are developing uh, Rust right now. And if you keep going here, we could see the Dagnite Protocol Fund. So this was another funding that we did. And this is all by voting. We basically vote to choose, hey, we want to allocate 1 million Caspa to uh, the Dagnite Protocol funding. We vote basically on whether or not we think that's enough money. If we think that's cool, you could see the voting options is yes, no, or needs more discussion. So most of the time, everything goes through or sometimes we say that we need more discussion about it. But most of the time, if it does go through, it doesn't mean that they just get the money like out of nowhere. It still requires us as users of Caspa to fund these protocols and fund the developers. It's all community funded. Like if you don't like something that they're doing, you just don't fund it. But obviously, we have a lot of consensus on Caspa because we do trust the developers who know what they're doing. We also trust the founder of Caspa, who's been in the space for over 13 plus years, has made protocols to try to fix Bitcoin and has been rejected. But now he's trying to fix everything wrong with a proof of work cryptocurrency and solving the trilemma. So we have a lot of consensus. And therefore, when we vote for something, people fund it and there's consensus to continue hard forking Caspa when we need to upgrade it, especially when we upgrade to Rust, when we upgrade to Dagnite, those are all going to be hard forks. And that requires consensus. And I'm pretty sure everyone's going to want to upgrade to Rust because that increases our blocks per second. Who doesn't want to make history with that? So uh, there's no company behind Caspa. It doesn't need anyone, no CEO. Uh, Yonatan is a founder of Caspa, but he's honestly a very quiet individual and he doesn't really say much uh about anything he's just kind of talking about how to solve the smart contract implementation for caspa he's just working on the protocols that we're trying to implement on caspa so it doesn't really matter 
Um, is there really a problem with Jonathan being a founder of, or that the founder is, is not anonymous? Uh, no, not really. Because again, if let's say they wanted to, to attack Jonathan uh, because he's the founder, they can attack him all he wants, but he doesn't have control over the network because the developers can continue working on the coin. And as long as we as community members want to keep funding the developers, we keep funding them to keep working on it. And again, the nodes choose if they want to agree on upgrading their hardware to the network of Caspa if there's a new hard fork, which hard forks are going to be coming on Caspa because we're going to upgrade to Rust, Dagnite, and all those other things. So I hope this explained a little bit of how these cryptocurrencies that are fair launched and have no companies but behind them actually work. And it basically just comparing it to Bitcoin Core and how, yes, there's centralized people, there's like founders that are behind the main dude behind Bitcoin Core. But at the same time, you know, if you just don't like what they're doing, go ahead and fork Bitcoin. But no one's going to fork Bitcoin because anymore because they know that what they've been doing has been working. I mean, Bitcoin's been around for 14 years and has not suffered any security issues and it's just still number one. So there's a reason for that. And that's why the nodes show that they trust Bitcoin Core. But, you know, it just takes one mistake for them to blow it. And all the nodes have to do is simply just revert their nodes and direct it to another client. And or in other words, start using Internet Explorer instead of using Google Chrome. If Google Chrome was to go crazy or if Bitcoin Core was to go crazy, they just use another client and remain uh, um, find a client that is running the original Bitcoin network as it should be. So I hope you guys enjoyed this explanation and you guys understand a little bit more of how Caspa works without a company behind it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel if you guys want more content on Caspa every single week. If you guys have not gotten your tantrum cards to hold your cryptocurrency offline, completely offline, off from exchanges, please consider getting your tantrum wallet. It's a cold storage card that allows you to hold Caspa offline from exchanges and you can get 10% off if you use my code Caspa Silver at the checkout. So hope you guys enjoyed all of this and as always don't be average be different